So did you know that the police are allowed to lie to you? I think a lot of people actually do know, but what most people don't know is when they're actually falling for the lie. I see it happen all the time. You know that the police are saying something to either trick you into doing something or to either scare you into a certain result and you fall for the lie anyway. Well, I am going to share with you the top lies that the police tell, and I'm also going to tell you how to spot it so that you don't fall for these lies and these tricks in the future. So I am criminal defense attorney, Hannah Akintoye. And now, uh, usually when I talk about police, you know, I'm not here to bash the police. Uh, you know, that's not what I do. But what I do think is important as a criminal defense attorney is for me to share with you what your rights are and for you to know your rights and to know the law when dealing with the law. See what I did right there? <laughs> okay, so um, enough with the corny jokes, let's get into this list. So the first lie that police officers tell is that they are going to get a warrant if you don't allow them to search. Now, this usually happens, you know, if they show up at your residence and they say, hey, you know, we've got a call for suspicious activity at this particular location, and it looks like you fit the description of the person that they say, you know, is involved in this suspicious activity. So what we would like to do is search your residence. Now, they'll usually preface this by saying, you know, you can either do, do it the easy way or you can do it the hard way. The easy way is you allow us to search. We go in, we come out in no time and um, no issues at all. Or the hard way is if you make us get a search warrant, we're going to come back in here and we're going to rip apart your entire residence from top to bottom. That's usually how they get you to consent to a search of your residence, your home, um, you know, your car, whatever it may be. Now, most people, especially if you have nothing to hide, you're going to say, okay, sure. Why not? Why don't you just get in and out quickly and search and, and, and look for whatever you need to find. But other people are concerned that if you make them get a warrant, they're really going to tear apart your residence. Now, what I tell people is, have you ever seen the police ask for permission to arrest you? No. If they have probable cause to arrest, they don't need your permission. Therefore, they're going to go ahead and arrest you regardless. Similarly, when it comes to searching a residence, a car, if they have probable cause to search or if they have a warrant or the ability to quickly get one, they don't need your permission. And therefore, they would just go ahead and get the warrant or immediately search if they have that probable cause to go ahead and search. When they're asking you for permission to search, they're really, most of the time, really just fishing around for things that they suspect, um, but they don't have enough reason to suspect what they suspect. It's really just, they're just kind of going off of a hunch. Uh, and so in those situations, you want to be aware and you want to be cautious. Now, the second way that police officers lie is by uh, lying to get you to confess to a crime. And this often happens when there are more than one person involved. So let's say you go into a store and you and your buddy steal a bunch of items and um, they catch you and they catch your buddy. And now they've arrested you and they've taken you to the police station. They'll say, hey, we have your buddy in the other room. Your buddy actually said that you stole everything and that they weren't really involved. They were just there with you and they had no idea that you were stealing these items. And then what that would do is it would force you to admit to some type of involvement, some type of crime, and or it would cause you to then turn the finger and point the finger at your friend who was with you. So oftentimes, as I mentioned in the scenario that I gave, if, if it's you and your buddy that were stealing items, you would say something to the effect of, well, I didn't really steal anything. I just had the items, but it was really my friend who stole the items. And those types of statements, even though you think that you're not admitting to anything, you're admitting to a lot of things. First of all, you admit that um, you knew that your friend was stealing items, right? Secondly, you admit that you were in the store or in the location that those items were stolen when who knows, maybe nobody even had your description, nobody even had your name, or nobody even had any idea of who you are, your identity. And so when you start talking, you are slowly confessing. Although you, you, don't, you don't say, hey, I did it. You are slowly confessing by admitting to various things that put you at the scene and or that uh, allow the police to have probable cause to arrest you. So you're really piecing um, the puzzle together for the police. So you wanna be careful about things like like that. If you're in a situation, especially if you've already been arrested and the police are questioning you, they know that they got to read you your Miranda rights and they know that you are entitled to an attorney. So in those situations, don't ever waive the presence of your attorney. Get an attorney as soon as possible.
control to make sure that you are not making statements that may incriminate yourself. And so the third on the list is when the police lie to you and they say that if you cooperate with them, they are going to tell the judge to go easy on you if you have pending charges. And so these are situations where, you know, let's say, uh, let's say you're charged with a drug possession charge, right? And what the police are really trying to do is go after the higher ups. So the people who are really maybe selling the contraband or the drugs. And so they'll say, okay, well, if you cooperate um, with me and, you know, I don't know, wear a wire or you, uh, you do a fake buy of drugs for me, then uh, what I'll do is I will tell the judge to go easy on you for, you know, your smaller, you know, possession charge. Those are complete lies as well. Why? Because uh, the police officer really doesn't have any say in what the outcome of your case is. Most of the time, uh, whether or not uh, the police agree that you help them, it's irrelevant. And um, what ends up happening is uh, if you are uh, going to trial or if you, let's say you take a plea, there's usually going to be some type of understanding of what you're pleading guilty to. The, your attorney would have discussed that with the prosecutor or the prosecutor would, would have provided maybe some type of plea offer um, that you could take. But rarely ever would there be a, uh, a situation where the police officer is just gonna show up in court on the day that you have court or on the day of sentencing and say, hey judge, please go easy on this guy because he helped me. One, you don't ever wanna put yourself in a situation where everybody knows that you're cooperating with the police. Um, that can obviously, um, create a danger to yourself and or to your family, uh, and depending on where you're from. And then secondly, the judge actually has no say in plea negotiations. So if the police are promising that they are gonna get your charges dropped, or they're promising that the judge is going to go easy on you, they really don't know what is in the mind of the judge. They also don't know what judge is assigned to your case or what judge is going to be assigned to your case. And let's say there is a plea offer on the table, a plea that you actually want to take. Your attorney is going to negotiate uh, what that plea is and what the outcome of that plea is. It's very rare that a police officer is going to be able to talk to the prosecutor and tell the prosecutor what the outcome of the case is. The prosecutor is skilled in uh, litigation. They're skilled in handling uh, criminal cases in court proceedings. Police officers, not so much. They simply enforce the law. And so uh, most of the time, a prosecutor is not going to take the advice of a police officer. They may ask for their opinion, they may ask for their input, but ultimately the prosecutor has the final say about what type of plea is offered, and that's if you are taking a plea. The prosecutor also has a say regarding whether or not any charges are dropped. The judges actually do not have a say in that. And um, finally, uh, even if there is a plea agreement, most of the time the judges have discretion regarding what your outcome is and what your sentence is. Um, there are situations, and again, this depends on your state or jurisdiction, where you, your attorney, and the prosecutor may agree on a plea and a sentence and the judge decides something else. So the officer's word that uh, they're gonna tell the judge to go easy on you, um, I, I honestly have never seen a police officer come into court and say, hey, I promised this guy at the time that I locked him up that I was going to tell you to go easy on him. So here I am. <laughs> I've never seen that happen before. They say that so that they can get you to confess or uh, they say that so that they can get you to cooperate. So those are some of the major lies that I have seen police officers um, tell to people who are not as knowledgeable on the law. So make sure that you are aware of all of those circumstances uh, in the event that that ever happens to you in the future. So I hope this information is helpful to you. If you got questions, go ahead and comment them below so that I can go ahead and answer your questions. And if you have suggestions on future videos, go ahead and let me know what kind of topics you would like to hear about. Uh, in addition, always feel free to reach me here or on my website, mydclaw.com. And I'm always happy to chat with you further if you do want to talk further. As always, stay safe and I'll talk to you soon.